liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the planning board meetings, March 28th, 2023. A little bit of uh, housekeeping before we get underway. If the fire alarm goes off in the building, it will cause a loud ringing of bells. There's a couple of strobe lights that might go off. If you hear that, please get up and walk. Do not run to the nearest appropriate exit and exit the building. When you get outside, please stay on the sidewalk. Please walk, do not run. Do not attempt to get in your car and attempt to drive away because you will impede the oncoming emergency vehicles. Once the building has been cleared, we'll come back inside hopefully and finish our meeting. So tonight, we have a rather lengthy, um, lengthy meeting here planned. Well, we're going to start with uh, Victor Acevedo, 54 Tenth Street, seeks permission to repair fire damage to single family dwelling with alterations to the first floor and second floor. Subject premises located in the arts and culture zone. Good evening, sir. Could you state name and, record and uh, address for record and please tell us all about uh, your application and do you have a cards? My name mailings. Oh, yeah, yeah. Twenty-one. One. No, 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 no. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Good evening. My name is Randall Santana. I'm the architect representing my client. We live in three. My office is three three one Willis Avenue, Minneapolis, New York. Okay. Eleven five zero one. Yes, sir. And. We are here to talk about 50, 52 Terry Street in Charta. We are in the downtown Charta. They have a fire damage in this house. And it's a non conforming house. It's very straight the land. And we just only want to renovate in the house as a sitting. They have in the second floor and the fifth. And we're going to keep, the, keep it exactly what we have before. But if you're looking in the plan, in the front of the, the building, we have a commercial. We take some portion of the commercial to give it to the residential. We have two bedrooms in the, in the first floor and two bedrooms in the second floor. Basically, that's what we did. So, so in the beginning portion of the commercial, we, we take like a 13 feet for the commercial. In the okay. Yeah. So there is a you'll have two two um, residents living or you'll have a resident living in the back and a commercial space will be separate and available. For no, them. it's gonna be it's not gonna be separate. It's gonna be attached no matter, because yeah. the building right now the system is attached. Okay. Okay. The only thing that we do is because the, the commercial was a little bit bigger and then we take some space from the commercial to give it to the residential because before we tried to do it at the second floor. No. So with the first prior meeting, they don't want me to do it in the second floor. That's right. why we decided to take it in the, to the commercial side. Okay. And, 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 and just for the record, they went to the zoning board yeah. and the setbacks were really non-existent for the board right. felt it was too much. So they're reorganizing the floor plan to make it work instead of going out further. Yeah. So you are rebuilding on the same exact footprint that currently exists. Correct. So the square footage overall will not change. The only thing you're changing is the amount of money that was amount the amount of square, square footage, footage that was allocated to commercial is now just you taking some of that back to um correct to allow, to allow for more living space for the same structure. Correct. And and the zoning board appeals did extend the non-conforming use, correct? They don't have to because they're not extending the non-conforming use. Okay. They're going to stay within the footprint. Now. They, they were looking to expand the floor plan on both sides, and the setbacks were non existent. So they okay. denied it. And as long as they stay within the footprint now, okay. we're good. All right. Okay. So go ahead, sir. That's what we are doing. Okay. So these are, you get paid by the pound? 
<laughs> I wish, I wish. <laughs> yeah, the smaller one, I think. Yeah, uh, he's better. No? <laughs> I failed that map, map in uh, class, which you know, I looked at that earlier. <laughs> this is a very narrow lot. It's a very, very, very narrow lot. Very narrow. And what are the rest of them in that area? Yeah, yeah, they, they may be the same thing. And it is virtually impossible. It is impossible to get anything out of the golf cart in the backyard. Yeah. Right. So right. if they only have yeah. seven foot of the yeah. um, Okay, so the, the exterior elevations of this home, of this building, stay exactly the same, the exterior elevations. It's going to be exciting. Right, they have new siding and new, new windows. Remember, it's a fire alarm. Yes, so everything right. was gone. Are you adding more windows? Okay, because we have it right in the property side, we're not going to do a new window on the side because it's going to be facing to the neighbor. But then the um, and then the right side, yes. We so the, have the east elevation windows. is going to have no windows at all. Yeah, no. It needs an egress, doesn't it? No, but the egress we meet in the egress from the Right side. Like, on the left side. Yeah. It's a railroad. Because if you see, know, yeah. because you see this wall is literally in the close to the property line. And part of the building department said to well, us so that we don't want to have a window for to the to the property for the neighbors. Yeah, that's why I'm not Right. Just go into the lot, right? So how many square feet is currently allocated to the uh, commercial part of the building? Right. For the commercial, is the guy in there? Oh, how many feet are you shortening up this way? I'm going to give it to you right now. Okay. <laughs> it was go back, back and forth with those drawings. For the commercial, we have... Um, uh, in so the first floor, it's like I'm hungry. We're gonna have a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Is that the current, or is that what you're gonna end up with? We're gonna end up. Um, What's your current? Yeah, the current is like a thousand. Okay, nine hundred something. Okay. Okay. So, you know, we're definitely within the spirit of the zoning team because we have the ability to have a, some, something to do with the arts or whatever right. in that commercial space. And he's basically taking 20 feet out of there, right? Not even 20 feet. No, even 20. No. Not even 20. Just adding it to create a little bit more living space. Mm -hmm. How many units total in the building? Two oh, units. Two units. Two units. No, no, it's two. We have a single family and the commercial. Okay. So the first floor and second floor residential space are one dwelling unit. Yes. Okay. Um. Yeah, I see a set of external cellar stairs. Is that there's a, there's a basement in this building? Yeah. Uh, are you proposing to put those stairs in, or are they existing? We propose out. Mm -hmm. Do that. Um, we do not approve external stairs that have a door at the bottom you can put in a set of hurricane doors uh, doors like a back door build door, door, door. Door. but to actually put a staircase down to the site to the basement floor with a with a regular door at the bottom it's not approved and, and in fact we have had residents remove them remove set of stairs like this so that can't fly. Right. But we, if we have a, because I was thinking when we changed the zoning, 
you have you need a egress window or uh, either access from the basement if you're having like a like a recreation area in the basement. So if you have an interior staircase and egress windows are fine. We okay. encourage egress windows in the basement. All right. Uh, so I can change in that. So let me turn to put it. Yeah, you can come back to us with a plan that shows an interior. Do you have an interior interest in the basement here? No. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah the very good. Yeah, it's on the east side of the building. Yeah, there's one. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you would need egress windows in the basement if you're going to have. Uh, the, there can be no living space down there. Right. You know, what is the height to the bottom of the uh, rafters? In the Seven feet. So, so it's not little, it's not, it's not going to be a little, it's going to, it's going to be a recreation there. Yeah, it's not um, habitable space. No. Your uses are pretty much limited as to what you can do. What is the current commercial use in the space? Right now, he's saying. Right, before, I'm sorry, before. And it was a retail space. It was, it was, a was like, it was like a little office over there. Okay. Cash register place or something. I don't, I don't remember. Is that leather or Rolana? Yeah, Rolana is like leather and oh, 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 okay. fabrics, I think. Is it? We have a new tenant prospect for this. this no, we have a homeowner who wants to keep in this space to have any bigger office for this space. Uh, okay. okay. They don't want to rent it for now. Okay. She wants to focus more than we have because we have like a lot of money Sure. Uh, it's just this is in the arts and culture district. Um, it's a special district that we created mm -hmm. for the community. So it would be nice if something, if a use that uh, conformed to the arts and culture district was in there, mm -hmm. which is there's quite a bit of there's quite a bit of choice there. Mm -hmm. So a prospective tenant, you know, would be great to get someone okay. with those uses. Okay. And that's all outlined in the code. Yeah, included. Our cafe, our gallery. But you can do another retail studio. space, yeah, studio space. There's a lot of choices. Mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Yoga studio. Yeah, yoga studio would be good there too. Could you could you step forward and explain something right here? Mm -hmm. What is what is this right here? Is this this is this stairway? This is the stairway to look the system. This is going to the second. It, 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 the first is the second. Because this portion of the building is the two Right, right. And the other one is the one side. Okay, so then what is this? Why why don't they match? Maybe it's me. No, that's wrong. Okay. Yeah, it's match. Because it's going like this. Yeah, so which one is right and which one is wrong? No, okay, okay. Yeah. It's good. That one go to the basement. This one okay. goes to that the That one go to the basement, and this one up. Okay. This is the cottage right there. You see yeah. the, the, the that line over there? Okay. That's it's coming like this. So, so it's tucked under the, over the top of the basement. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. That's how it is. So, so this one go down. One set of stairs to the basement, yeah. one set yeah. to yeah. upstairs. Okay, all right. Okay. Okay. And the entrances to the building is one on the side here. That's an existing concrete step here uh -huh. in the middle of the driveway. In the middle of the driveway. Well, it wouldn't matter anyway unless you get a very narrow car. And then there's one entrance in the rear. For the rear. And one in the front. No, for the front, you don't, you don't have any. No, there's no, because that's commercial. This is the commercial. So, the, so, okay, there's two entrances for the home. Uh -huh. Okay. And so this has to be removed. Okay. Should we go around the room? Uh, anybody have any questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Linda, do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. Eva? No, I think I have them. Thank you. I ask my agents. Okay. I, I, this house is, was totally gutted. It's totally fire damage. So you can put in a new heating system. You're putting in gas, direct vents. Mm -hmm. And also, the structure wise, we, we updated right now before the rafter was the joint was to by four mm -hmm. and rafter to by six. So we updated to right. put in the new for the new code to by 10 and to by eight because of how the structure wise was already done. Okay. And the um, 
going to have a tough time to be a dumpsters. I know. I'm going to have to have a plan for that. You're going to have to work that out with, uh, I don't know, what's the setback here? Maybe 15 feet in front of the building? Hmm. From the road. From so the road is like a 20 feet. Is it 20 feet? Uh, yeah. So you're going to have to work that out with the village. Um, you know, it's a problem. You can't put it in the driveway and, I know. and you, you're going to have to put it in the front off, off of the road, especially since there might be some significant construction going on across the street. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to really make, have to make sure that, uh, that that is not going to impede, you know, the situation there. So in that, in that situation, I can tell you the next house is his brother. Okay. So they share the driveway. Literally, yeah. So any dumpster can go all the way to the because the, the, the house is in parallel and right. then they have a bigger space that they can put the dumpster right yeah. out inside the building. Oh, okay, fine. So, that's friendly situation. as long as it's off the road, that's yeah, 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 definitely. That's how it's gonna work. Okay, and, and what what about the siding on this house? What's the siding gonna be? You're gonna reside the whole house? We have to reside it. So, what's the plan? Facing, we're going to put inside in, you know, um, we have to shore in the building in order to take a remote home or whatever we have to, you know, put the stuff and everything to be spicing again. But definitely going to be a challenge in this house. Um, so if we're going to reside the whole building, is it, is it going to be vinyl? It's going to be vinyl. Okay. Including, how about, including the front? How about the front? The front, we, 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 the commercial, talk about the commercial, we try to think in putting like some brick in the, in the front because, you know, because I know it's a Ari, Ari area, it's like a downtown. We try to put in some brick just only the face and then maybe have the stock on the side and then just only the, the, the house put in the side. Shouldn't yeah. Uh, they have to get it, bring it in elevations with the materials and colors, the architectural. Review committee will take a look right. at okay. that. Yeah. And also the the above the lower roof for the commercial space, there are two triangles, which are not going to be able to be just simple vinyl. You're going to have to provide something in here too okay. that matches the lower. Okay. Okay. So having the same the same look. The same look in the yeah. Yeah. Any signage, lighting, etc. It's, it's going to all have to come back, and they're going to have to approve it all. Okay. So make sure your client knows that because. Um, we have to have that approved before we, before we can go forward with this. So you're going to need to resubmit uh, a set of plans, or we can we can either redline these, or, or if all we have here is just the uh, the removal of the stairs and, and the addition of the on building, the front. is it if it's is your desire to still put a a, a bill code door instead of stairs going down? Yeah, a I hurricane would. door. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. Okay. Um, should we have them resubmit that, or should we just put a part of the grant? I think we can. If, since it's the only thing here, and and again, the, the treatment on the front of the building has to be specified. Yeah, well, you know, not specified as right. a, like, Yeah, you're gonna have to come back to the the AR or AR student and um get those ARC. 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 it's a committee your i can tell you right now that the front of the building you, you cannot use lap uh lap uh vinyl it's going to require uh it's not black the thing is it's no, not black, black. wrap okay <laughs> i hear you say black <laughs> what am i trying to say help me out uh, you know, clabbered, 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 clabbered siding yeah, on the fronts of buildings we don't like. So okay. it's going to have to be. I mean, since it's the art, you might want to you might want to think of something maybe a little ornate to put perhaps on the second floor, and then on the first floor uh, something like a. Um, a um, like a shake or a uh, um, perfection type of arrangement, you know, perfection type of shape. Uh, do something do, a little bit. Can we do cultured stone or something like that? I'm sorry? Cultured stone? We can do it. Cultured stone would be fine too. Yeah. And you can bring that to them. Okay. What we don't want to see is we don't want to see just vinyl clappers on yeah, the front of the building. The plan yeah. actually says existing exterior brick wall. 
Yeah, I'm looking at that right And then up yeah. above, it says new vinyl side and customers select like the color. Yeah, whatever. yeah that's why I want to, I, I mentioned about the brick of the culture song because they can match in exactly what it is. No matter what the one that it's in right now is like a red. Yes. Which I don't like that much. Yeah. Personally. <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. I try to see if we can put it on a little bit more contemporary. You know. And then on the, I, guess, I assume on the side, we were talking about vinyl yeah. collaborate side and the side. Yes. Because, because yeah, that's have, fine. Because you have to understand one of the side is part of the neighbor property. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So which right now is just only salmon. It's probably like a stock. Mm -hmm. We don't know. We don't want to do that much in that side. Right. But the front end understand that because it's part of the yeah. area. Right. When you're redoing that much of the property, we want to see it brought up to standard. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. Is this hooked up to the sewer line right now at this property? Do you know? As far as the septic system is concerned, no, it is not hooked up to the system. Uh, we are the plan to hook up that you're doing this. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Can, can we, but is, I mean, is it possible to button this up right now with just a few? Yeah, we can button it up subject to, and, and I mean, I, if the ARB needs to, we need okay, to see what the data is. Yeah, no, I understand. You can have a seat. Anybody, well, anybody else have any questions for this gentleman? Are you gonna have a seat? Take your, uh, yeah. thank you. Yeah, take it's your 20 pounds. Thank you. 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 We probably should see in the plan with the proper things on it, with the proper elevations drawn. So what we'd like you to bring back to us um, is a new plan that shows the hurricane door in the back, the Bilko door, the removal of the stairs, right? Um, shows just the Bilko door for access to the basement. And um, the treatment of the front, the materials, if you could bring in samples for the ARC, uh -huh. I point over there because those are two members of my ARC um, who, who are experts in that area and can sit down with you. And, um, you know, they, they then refer back to the entire board. Okay. So we're going to adjourn the application tonight. We're going to keep it on our docket for next month. So the month from now, we have our meetings once a month. I know, okay? I know. Um, and you come back with those changes to the plan. You, you also said health department. Did you go to the health department at all? No, no, no. are adding a bedroom. So you check, double check with them. They may just want proof that you're hooking up and you have hooked up to the sewers, but you need to check with them because you're adding a bedroom. The house is older than 1970. Yeah, but I, I before the house was using as a in the record on health department has four bedrooms and we keep in the four bedrooms. So yes. I have to do it because when I call them those guys, that's what they say to me when I, when I call them. In record, they have in four bedrooms. Hmm. The health department has four bedrooms? Yeah, we have two bedrooms on Iowa. So I don't know, I don't know how it, when I give it a record of it, they told me, you don't have to do that if you have, if we have a list of four bedrooms. <laughs> Okay, so that's all, all right. Because you don't want them showing up in the middle of the project if you don't have if you don't have that. So okay, uh, I'm going to take most from the journey application. Hold it till next month. We'll get you. We'll put you on the first. How's that? Those 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 guys over there crying like a. Uh, imagine they have. You tell them we can take care of their problem. All right, we'll get them going. We just have to do things right. right. Dot the I, cross the T. And we'll get them going in one month. All right. As long as everything you bring back is good. And unless somebody in the neighborhood comes out and says, oh, this is terrible, I don't think that's going to happen. Right. Because right. I think you guys are going to do a it's good his job. Brother. <laughs> yeah. So uh, can I can I uh, get a motion? So a motion by Mr. Logan, seconded by Mr. Oh, yeah, we did that already. All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and um,
Bring the little plans. I will. I will. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Next time the agenda, the uh, agenda is the, the adjourned application of Patrick uh, of Patch Stores Realty LLC 492-494, Fire Under West Main Street, six approval for revision to site plan as approved by October 27th, uh, 2020. Applicant also seeks revisions to architectural advisory committee approval for signage and elevation of certain premises located in the B5 business zone. Uh, notes from savings. Is the applicant present tonight? <coughs> the, record yes, he's ready. the record should reflect that we have met with the applicant on several times. Yes. We were uh, waiting for a letter from Suffolk County. Uh, in order to, um, I went to their planning board, uh, to their planning board for planning board approval, or their suggestions to come back to us. Um, we have received that letter, and um, we, um, I'm sorry? It, we can revise and extend it into the records. Oh, yeah. It should be added to the record without a that's the Suffolk County record. Yeah, and there is one note that we should read. First of all, good evening, sir. Could you state your name and address for the record? Richard Bono, 45 Orchard Drive, right where is the Okay. You can come on that. Okay. Nice talking to you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, sir. How's you okay? Right. Many people watched you on TV last night. Yeah. All right. So let me show you what person. <laughs> Okay, so the only thing that they had managed uh, to, to say was that they 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 were uh, against an a any access, uh, I guess, to Main Street, and we looked at that very carefully over the many times that we've gone through this plan, and that is far enough down the road that that is not going to be an issue. Okay. So other than that, uh, unless I'm incorrect here. I do not see any reason for us to. Uh, well, uh, just the matter is that they consider this to be a um, matter of local determination. Right. The issues that they raised were heavily vetted by the local determining board, which is us. Right. And, and they were exactly these issues of that, that potentially dangerous intersection yep. of Atlantic Avenue and, and West Main Street, which I've negotiated hundreds of times in my life. And I, I, since getting this letter, I've driven past it a few times, and I've looked at where we're proposing to do it. I respectfully disagree with them. I think we're, we're better off doing what we've come up with. Uh, I think Atlantic Avenue, we decided, was not a good idea for various reasons. Very narrow street at that point. Right. So I, for one, am comfortable with, with what we had come up with in terms of the uh, the access on West Main Street. It's, 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 on the West, it's on the eastern part of the property, well off of that corner. Yeah. Piggyback with, with Mr. Weeks, we discussed this at length back in 2019. Yeah. And we actually have a traffic impact study that, that indicates yes. that that's the best place on the property to put the ingress and ingress. And also, the usage that we have here is probably the, the, the lowest impact usage that you could have for this property of, of, um, of anything that is by right that could go there. So. Uh, we think that this is, uh, and, and have thought for quite a while, this has been a good project that we've been eager to see get going. However, um, we do have a letter that I, that I guess we do need to read into the record. It's from uh, Marianne's uh, Stoke here, the 24 Harvest Drive Blue Point, Blue Point resident, and it is, of course, addressed to the planning board. And this is a homeowner off of Atlantic Avenue. I wish to voice my concern regarding the storage facility requesting a third floor. I understand the fire marshal denied a basement. Why would you grant them a third floor? It's not in tune with our community. It's patched over borders on Blue Point. The corner is not the right location as there have been several accidents due to the turn on Atlantic and Montauk. It is narrow. Can we work together to come up with a solution as third floor is too much if the storage facility is going forward? Maybe you can help find them another location. So the first thing I'd like to comment is that nobody knows more than me the, the types of accidents that have happened uh, at that corner. And she is absolutely correct that it is a treacherous corner. However, um, again, the uses that by right 
could be put on this property would create far more traffic than a self-storage facility, which typically generates very little usage. As far as the height is concerned, this building falls within the, the uh, zoning uh, height uh, and is actually below that height. Um, we feel that we've done our best to get an architecturally pleasing building. It's gonna be set back quite a bit from uh, any of the houses on Atlantic Avenue, and I, I believe we've exhausted this application, quite frankly. But we will put this letter into the record. We do understand that people do not like change, but that's much better. Changes yeah. in everything. So, do you have anything you'd like to add at this time? No, just looking to move forward with the project. That's all. Okay, so I'll ask you to have a seat unless anybody else has any questions. This gentleman. No. And I will ask one last time if there is anyone who wishes to speak for or against the project. If so, please come to the podium now. There being no one coming forward, I will ask for a motion from the board. Mr. Chairman, I would move that we approve this. Um, Resubmitted application. I'm just seeing if we need to actually uh, identify this plan, which has been revised. We looked at a couple of different um, elevations here. I'm looking for a date on this. Um, uh, project number, I don't know. Okay. Here we are building elevations. No data is pulling numbers. Uh, revisions. Okay. Dated February 22nd, 2023. That is what we are, what I'm moving to approve um, as it has been submitted to us. Don't run us the weeks. I should add that. Oh. I'm sorry, because. Yeah. All of the previous conditions that were placed upon the application shall carry over this rule as well. Can I get a second on the uh, motion? Second, Mr. Ferguson. All those in, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Boyd. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Okay, moving on to page one. Next application is that of Honey Pilates, 8 West Main Street. Seeks permission to open a Pilates studio. I want to say highlights so bad. <laughs> Subject premise is located in the D3 business zone. Good afternoon. Do you have the uh, cards, the uh, receipts? Yes. Okay. Give it green. Do we need the greenies or those? If they, if you got any of the green cards, if yeah. not, this is the first mail. Thank you for coming down this evening. Uh, could you state your name and address for the record and let the record reflect that we did meet with the applicant at our work session just prior to this meeting? You're yes, on. sir. Thanks for having us. I'm Kyle Simpson. My wife Maria. We live at Three Ten Road Train Casual. Okay. And so we, tell us all about your project. Do you want to open the Pilates studio at 8 West Main Street? Sweet six. Sweet six. So it's in the rear of the property, correct? Yes, yes ma'am. Like, and you'd yeah. access from the main entrance. The, the, the main entrance on Main or the back? Uh, main, main Street. Main Street, yeah. okay. What do you folks need to do as far as uh, getting this, the uh, space ready for you? So there are a lot of changes that need to be made, or is it basically an open floor space right now up there? It's open floor space. There's existing mirrors, so we don't have to do anything to paint. And just just dust it up and, and, and bring in whatever fixtures you're bringing, which are reformers. Reformers. Yeah. And this floor plan shows, is it like eight of them, I guess? Yeah. Okay. And there's an existing front desk already there, it appears. Yeah. There's no uh, restroom? No, it's uh, a shared restroom in the hallway. Okay. 
And the reformers don't require electrical or no. also. In what session you mentioned that there was going to be a small retail component yeah. to this as well? Uh, selling t shirts and sweatshirts. That would be by the existing front desk. Yeah. So the business model is to conduct classes at, at specified times. Uh, yeah. And what do, they, what do they propose hours of operation? So 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. will be classes on the hour with a break between noon and three. And is that seven days a week or is it only during um, the week? Every day, but on Friday through Sunday, it'll be only in the morning for um, seven to 10. Okay. And how many staffing are you going to have? Just one. Okay. Is this a new enterprise for you guys or have you done this before? Uh, it's new. Congratulations, God bless. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? Again, we reviewed the application thoroughly in work session, in public work session, prior to this meeting. Okay, guys, you can have a seat. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to speak either for or against this application? Sure. There being no one coming forward, I'll entertain a motion for approval on this application. A quick question. ARP, do these, do these guys have any kind of signage they're talking yeah. about? Yeah. You want to do that now and just fold it right into this? Sure. Or? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. So the sign is going to be above the door on Main Street at 8 West Main Street. It's a white sign. White sign with black lettering. Uh, it's just going to say honey pilates, five feet by 16 inches. And then they're going to have their logo on vinyl lettering on the door um, with a QR code underneath, also vinyl, um, so that people can access it on the website. Mm -hmm. And you guys, and you guys are you're good with this. Yeah. All right. So I would make a motion that we would. Uh, both approve the proposed signage as well as the site plan for this application as presented. Motion by Mr. Weeks. So, a uh, second. Second by Mr. Radewski. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Congratulations. Welcome to uh, the business community. Thank, Thank you very much. We you. wish you the best of luck. Thank you. you have don't bring, don't bring too much cash driving to work. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take a look at this one. Yaz T. Patro, the LLC, 38 South Ocean Avenue, seeks permission to open a Yaz store. The proposed interior alteration soda premises located in the D3 business zone. Good evening. Hi, you Mr. have uh, your cards. Yes, you know, your mail. Thank you. So, if you're going to speak, state your name and address for the record. Tell us all about it. Good evening, uh, members of the board. My name is Pablo Rodriguez. I am the engineer uh, working with the uh, tent. Uh, my address is 70 East Main Street in Patcho. And we are seeking permission to uh, uh, start a Yasti franchise uh, for Kelly and Nevin. Uh, they are the owners of this franchise. It's going to be the fourth store. They have one in Hop Park, Farmingdale, something like that. Huntington Village. Huntington Village. Yes. Huntington Village, of course. And we are looking to get a Glencoe, uh, uh, Greyneck, Greyneck, and Sayasa. Yes. So it is it is a franchise that is starting here in Milan. And, and this is going to be the first one in Sopo County. Tell us a little bit about it. Yes. Business is a bubble tea store. I don't know if you guys know the concept. Bubble tea store. Yeah, it's a bubble tea. It's a new thing. It's not hallucinating. <laughs> Yeah. And, and, and you know, Kelly is going to explain a little bit more. She yeah, please. Say your name and address for the record. How are you? Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Kelly. I'm the CEO and founder of Yash Tea. Okay, your last name? Joe, Kelly Joe. Okay. D H O U. So I'm honored to present the idea of bringing our business to Patch Up. We are currently have three stores. Uh, like uh, my engineer Pablo said, the first one is in Farmingdale, second one in Huntington Village. Third one in Patch Up and hoping to bring the fourth one to the uh, no, the third one is in Hop Hop. So right. hoping to bring the fourth one here in okay. Patch Up. 
and we already have um, uh, Siamese and Green Egg and many more to come. Wow, great. great. This so Yaki good. is a business that was born in Long Island and has grew to be very supported and loved by uh, the Long Island community. We were voted the best bubble tea in Long Island three years in a row uh, in the nomination uh, for hosted by the best of Long Island, uh, the process of 1.4 million voters. Oh, that's wow. Best of Long Island. That's How about that. Pretty darn good. Yeah. And we have also <laughs> been uh, very proud partners, sponsors, and vendors for many organizations, including Suffolk County Police Department, Town of Oyster Bay, Town of Farmingdale, Town of Iceland, Town of Huntington, New York Cancer and Blood Society, local hospitals, schools, and numerous other organizations. So, as a minority woman business owner, I feel extremely grateful to be living in the American dream and realizing my vision through my determination, hard work, and a fearless, fearless spirit. Uh, my personal mission is really to build the bridge between the entrepreneurs around the world by connecting people to share the sweet moments. Um, I'm also very passionate about inspiring young women to pursue their dreams and become entrepreneurs. I've been a mentor to many women of many all ages. Yasi is more than a business to me. It's a way for me to reach out and to create a positive impact and opportunity and to tell all the girls that don't be afraid to pursue what you believe in. Um, and look, don't listen to all the voices that tell you you cannot do it. Look what I have done and you can do it too. So with your support, um, I'm confident I can bring my unique brand and mission to patch up and continue to create positive changes in our community. So thank you for considering our proposal. Hope to gain your support. Sure. Well said, thank you. And, and, and just uh, get on the technical side, uh, we are uh, proposing to do this in uh, South Ocean Avenue, Terry South Ocean Avenue. It used to be an ice cream store. The infused ice cereal ice cream, cream yeah. 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 right on the corner as you then enter the right. parking lot there. So, so we're not changing anything with respect to zoning, stuff like that, you know, just so you hear alteration of the uh, of their uh, of their uh, operations and, and and you know other, other, uh, we don't have to go to uh DPW because we're not doing anything with tour everything is the same the same operations but there's not a change in it's just a, a quick imperial operation. So you don't really need to do a lot of work to get ready to actually move Correct. into the site. It's a pretty good shape the way it was left. Yeah. Okay. Um what are the hours of operation going to be? Uh, our current store is at 12 to 8. Okay, so basically that's the model you're going to... Yes. Yeah. Okay. 12 to 8, 7 days a week? 7 days a week, yes. Yeah, okay. And uh, how many... Uh, this is what we have, you know, the for our, like, construction for other stores. Leave a slide. Oh. Um, how many staff members will be on uh, on site? It's about, like, three full-time, okay. maybe one part-time. Okay. And again, that's somewhat similar to what you guys have done in the other uh, stores? Yes. It's a franchise uh, wow. model, so everything is the uh, same as all other stores. But you, it, you created this, correct? Yeah. Because you created, created, you created yeah. this franchise. And are we looking at any, any particular uh, store in this in the uh, pictures here? Uh, um, the this is the hot dog site. This is, this is, US, US location. So this is kind of the idea about what you try to look make the patch on. Yes. This is nice. Very nice. It's no ceiling. It's really nice. Yeah, there's no ceiling, but it's just like small space. It's going to be just uh, so it's, 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 you come in. It's a takeout. Take you, you don't you don't fit in. Okay. And right now, you know, the, some of the uh, the the, uh, the hubs here, Long Island, Huntington, and they already have one. Anything at all success. We also open a red on for like you know eight Oh yeah, sure. I'm like that. We got all that too. While your your taste in interior design is to be commended. Wow. Yeah. So we are in business Indeed. for the past 20 years. Uh we own uh other brands under the group entity. So we um we have a very successful uh track rate. 20 years. All right, so you're you're not a newbie. Obviously, you're doing well anyway if this is your fourth and you got more in the works. I've heard of bubble tea. I've never had it, but it seems to be something that's very popular. Yeah. I, I think the ladies of the building department states that are already right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, free samples, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of selling uh, 
baked goods there also? Yeah, so we have uh, bakery goods, but I make it in my commissary kitchen, so I would not be cooking at all. Okay. Just, so no, um, no cooking. Um, yeah. So you have experience with the Suffolk Health Department then? Yes, yes. 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 Because we've got like yes. six locations in Suffolk. Great. And, and the applications for the health department for this location in Patrick has already been submitted. Perfect. Any merchandise, mugs, shirts, anything like that, hats? Uh, I, I plan to sell that online only. Okay. So, yeah. And we are, I'm very uh, emphasizing our technology. Uh, so all the store, we are enforcing uh, cashierless operation so all the orders will be done through apps online and kiosks yeah. only okay. yeah right. it's a way to connect uh, customers to uh, our customer support to give them the, the best customer support we can. and how many people do you have on site at a time uh normally it's three people three people operation with uh, if it's busy time it's like three and a half um no alcohol right no okay. no it's like a carbonated tea. I'm trying to get the bubbles. So boba tea is uh when it if you had to summarize it, it's a uh, tapioca plus your choice of beverage. So tapioca is made of tapioca flowers made mm -hmm. into the ball shape, mm -hmm. and you cook them. And then we are the most famous for the best boba tea because we keep our boba one hour fresh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So once you try, um, uh, I don't recommend you try us for the first time if you have boba tea. Because you cannot match it. <laughs> <laughs> so try it all, try it. All the time. You're very good market. Yeah. <laughs> I even have a, a joke. I my Huntington location, so we have many competitors come, and also including farming. Though I have many competitors come because we are very successful. So my I have a very loyal following on Insta, Instagram. So people when I go go tell you like this open and you if they don't match. <laughs> I'm not bragging, but I'm I take quality and service to an extreme. Um yeah, everything has to be perfect. Um we have uh, like our own health inspection team internally. So I send them to each store, make sure everything is done correctly. And um yeah. Excellent. Well that's how franchises are built, right? Yes, yes. And you don't have to go further than Ray Croc to see that one. Okay. Yeah. McDonald's. Yeah. Okay, very good. Any other questions for this applicant? Four panelists. Good. Yep. When do you expect to open it? We'll yeah, as, yeah. early, early, early as early as possible because we have many in the pipeline. So yeah, we probably have another six more coming before this year. So, so how long does the build out take then? Probably like uh, a couple months. Like yeah, couple months. Have summer. You? We're trying to finish in the summer, so can have all the other ones follow. Have you met with ARC about yeah, planning? Yeah, and, yeah. 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 we have that was done tonight as well. Yeah. So we can you go that right in as well. I will submit that um, minor adju uh, adjustment they want us to make and then uh, submit that possible tomorrow morning. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we met with client and um, with this resubmission is going to be right now we have a black rectangular sign 11 feet by 2.6. Two feet six inches. Um, the color of the sign is a little bit darker than what actually is going to be shown. So she's going to resubmit the color because it's a little bit more of a charcoal gray. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> we have a that's a sign on the east elevation, and then a sign on the west elevation in the back. Uh, now you said the sign on the back is just going to be a wooden sign. Oh, it will be the same as the the front. So but I will do the, all the adjustment for the front and back. And it's going to be a much smaller sign. It's not going to be the same size. You know, just pretty much what matching what's uh, the, the matching the size of the existing sign that is in there right now. Okay. So it, 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 there's already two existing signs in the front and the back. We're trying to match the size, and we are supposed to do a little bit of illumination, just really minor. Okay. Uh, so the problem. illumination is going to be a dim light on that. Yes. Yeah. I will emphasize that. And the sign is going to say yes. Tea and underneath is a global tea. Coffee and um, were you going to do any vinyl lettering on the door, or is it? Uh, no, no. Okay. So we're going to wait to see the resubmission on that, but can kind of approve it. Uh, so Subject to that, but you reached the you reached this basic understanding as to what the resubmission is going to yes, be. Yes, correct. Okay. Yes. So um, you get final approval on. Yeah. The rear entrance is open to the public as well. No, or it's not. No, it's no, not. Like it looks like it looks okay. Okay, so that's for staff only. Okay. It is it is a small space and uh you just pretty much we're not allowed to have enough. Uh, well I, I see what's gonna be in the rear anyway. There's a it's the refrigerator and uh, yeah. So 
about 790 square feet to square miles. So it's, it, you know, for, for all their equipment and, and the operations, it just doesn't even go into any. Uh, the drawing makes it bigger than it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think Amherst is the only one that uses usable yeah. your renters. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Jimmy Shrews, I used to go in the rear of the back in the place, though. Yes, mm -hmm. right. yeah. Okay, we good? Everybody good? Is there anyone in the audience wish to speak uh, for or against this application? If there's no one coming forward, I'm not saying about people. And Mr. Chairman, I would move we approve the application subject to the uh, uh, ultimate approval of the uh, agreed upon revisions for signage by the Architectural Advisory Board. Motion by Mr. Weeks. Second. Oh, second. Second by Ms. Seconded by Mr. Logan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Patro. Okay, Better Man Distilling Company. Good night. 161 uh, River Avenue seeks revisions to previously approved application. Every premise is located in D2 business zone. Greetings, everyone. Hey. Greetings, how are you? Did you um, do your mailing? Uh, yes, unfortunately, they went out without green cards, but I do know they were received because I had a phone call from Mark Volkman, our landlord, about it, and I do believe Mr. Kojak has a copy with him. So, uh, my apologies on that, of the letter we sent out. Do you okay. have the white receipts? Really? I do not, unfortunately. I'm going to need to be brought to Carol tomorrow morning. You mailed them at certified, though. No, they did not go out certified. That was our negligence. Yeah, you uh, so can't do it. It has to be done certified. So you're gonna to have to do the mailing correct way, and we can talk to you next month. Okay. Will we automatically be on the calendar? Will I'll, we'll we'll just adjourn your application until next month. Okay. okay, so any uh in the matter of uh better man distilling, I'll obtain a motion to adjourn the application pending correct mailing. So major motion made. Can I get a second? Second. Second, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Carry. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Full of capital, we will hold and meet with them in the future. NYU Langone Health, 196 East Main Street, seeks approval for elevation of the site plan for ambulatory surgery center. Um, it should be uh, part of the record that on several occasions over the past, I guess at least year, um, the planning board um, has, not the board, but a subset of the board and not a quorum, has met several times with the applicants um, to review and, uh, and to uh, look at the plans that have been going forward for this uh, project. And um, uh, in work sessions or scoping meetings. Uh, so this is a first time I believe that we're actually going to be meeting with the applicant at a published board meeting. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you guys doing tonight? Great. Um, I would ask that, that you have the mailings stuff. Thank you. And if you're going to speak, which I know you probably all are, um, the name and address for the record. And give me a uh, give me a minute here before we get going. I just have to make sure I have everything in front of me. So. Okay. Uh, in the public, in the, in the interest of the public, if we could possibly position that board so that they could also see what's going on here. We do have the plans in front of us, and if they're here and they're interested in this plan, 
they should also be able to take a look at it. Yeah, that would be good. I'm sorry. Camera for you. Is there a camera there? Yeah, for you too. Oh, it's that camera. Yeah, towards the, so the camera as well as the folks in the audience can see. So just flip it. There you go. There you go. That work. And, and if anybody wants to see anything in particular, they, they should feel yeah, free to, to uh, come up to that table and have a seat if you want to see it. We certainly want to make that uh, available for the public to do any further. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're good. So this um, property is the old Burlington coat and for us real old guys, the old beehive um, on East Main Street in Pat Road. And uh, as I said, we've worked with this applicant quite a number of times now to uh, forge together, uh, I think, uh, uh, a nice plan. So um, let's uh, let's hear about it, sir. Okay, my name is Jim Case. I'm the Canada Design Architects. Our address is 300 uh, East 42nd Street. And with me is Michael Filgowski uh, and Brian Hayden, uh, the project architect and project manager, also uh, in Canada Design. And we're going to walk you through the plans. And we also have uh, Angela Leno from VHB. Uh, civil engineers who talked about the site plan and things of that nature. So I guess we'll go introduce the project by describing the date. First of all, can you tell us what the project is? Yes. Yeah. So the public. Oh, like, certainly. Uh, NYU Langone is proposing to uh, uh, renovate the old Burlington Code Factory building and turn it into an ambulatory and turn into a, an ambulatory care center that includes three programs, ambulatory surgery, endoscopy, and a provision practice. And it's a two-floor building right now. And we are going to raise the roof about five foot ten inches so that the ambulatory surgery program can fit on the second floor. It needs a little bit more head height to the type of program and type of HVAC systems and whatnot that you need for a program like that. And we're putting new facades on front and back and uh, got renovated the whole building. Um, I can get more detail or less as we go along, enough. it's up to you. No, essentially, it's exactly the same footprint. Same, it's the same footprint. It's going to raise, it's gonna raise yeah. the, the, the side walls up about five and a half feet yeah. to, ac to accommodate the things, the mechanicals and, and whatnot, and the height that's required mm -hmm. for operating suite on a second floor. So is the second floor going to maintain the setback that it has now, or is it going to be the full length of the building? We're not changing the setback. Okay. Well, the, the second floor is the mezzanine in the building. The mezzanine is being built in, but in the, okay. the building footprint remains the same. Right. right. Yeah. So there's going to be extensive steel work that takes place right. over the course of time. Um, okay. Okay. So. This drawing here just shows the footprint of the building on the site plan A051. And uh, with, with uh, Main Street over here and a parking lot back here. Uh, and this is just a paper drawing to show you the Next drawing is going to show you our floor plans, starting with the first floor. Um, on the first floor, uh, with the main street over here and the parking lot over here, the main entrance is really going to be the parking lot side of the building. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Most of the uh, patients are coming by car. So, but we're maintaining entrances on both main street and the parking lot side that are connected through with a, with a corridor. And we're creating a um, desk, entry desk at both ends. Uh, with uh, security desks, both ends, and angry Um The first floor has an endoscopy suite, which is the endoscopy procedure that means four blue rooms here. And then there are 12 uh, pre and post uh, procedure bays for recovery nurse station. Endoscopy has its own waiting area right here. Uh, and 
is really kind of a, a self-sufficient suite within the space. Uh, the only thing that it's using elsewhere to building endoscopy really is uh, there is a central sterile processing for cleaning instruments on the second floor that both ambulatory surgery and endoscopy will be using. So not to ask a stupid question, but endoscopy, not colonoscopy. Well, it's it's really colonoscopy. All right, okay, no, that's why. All right, so it was a stupid question. Okay, all right. All right. The trick well, that makes sure you're in the right room. They make you vote. Understood. Understood. Yeah. They usually go, yeah. So you can go in either end. I prefer the bones, yeah. That was a good presentation. You should do your marketing. Uh, the, the physician practice is along this side here. And and has 22 exam rooms and associated uh, physician offices and nurse uh, or uh, assistant spaces and whatnot. And it's a it's a standalone with its own waiting room, access to off the main lobby here uh, or through here. But most patients will come down and enter here. When you say physician practice, just to make it clear in my mind, sure. those physicians that are there are going to usually be gastrointestinal guys, right? They're not going to have like a GP working up there and having his patients come up for, you know, a cold or something. Typically, anybody who goes to the center is coming for, you know, uh, can, you, can, you, can you further explain John, when you say physician practice? Sure, sure. John Ricotta, uh, NYU, I know from the state development facilities. Um, <clears throat> correct. So the physician practice, um, the specialties that we plan on having here are all related to gastroenterology. Okay. So right now it's urology, um, possibly colorectal, and of course, uh, like gastro. Okay. So we don't have plans for internal medicine uh, or, as you okay. said, um, for gynecology. Right. So that's for this entire facility? Well, that's for the physician's practice. Oh, for the physician's for, practice. And okay. then the gastro, the, as we've been referring to as endoscopy, is the gastroenterology. So it would be the procedures. For colonoscopies, endoscopies, and uh, ambulatory surgery um, would be um, obviously ambulatory uh, procedure that you can you would be in and out. Um, which right now we're planning on completing. Um, we're sort of working through the service lines for for surgery on the second floor. Okay. Um, Thank you. We are adding two passenger elevators to the building right here, mm -hmm. plus an open uh, decorative stairway. Take you up to the second floor. The existing freight elevator stays and will be refurbished and be utilized. We're adding a second freight elevator that also accesses, will, will, will access it for a second in the roof as well. And uh, we have two uh, fire stairs. Uh, they're new, but they're in roughly the same location as the existing two fire stairs. We're just putting new ones in because the existing ones don't completely comply with the code. We're taking them out and putting new ones in. Uh, the areas in gray are support areas, uh, um, electric distribution rooms and things of that nature. Oh, and the last thing, I'm sorry. And the, the loading dock is right here. Currently, the loading dock enters from this side. We're changing that to enter from right here. The other side. The second floor. Uh, is the ambulatory surgery center. So there's uh, the two elevators I mentioned in the stair, waiting, reception. You come in here, this is a 24 station uh, prep recovery area. And then through here are six operating rooms. The area in green here is the central sterile uh, processing, which I described before, which is really will sterilize instruments. And uh, the rest of the areas really are support areas like um, staff work areas and uh, soil cleaning supply and uh, things of that nature. Um, staff lockers are over here, uh, staff uh, lounges here. Um, I don't know if that is enough. So the crux of the second floor is the ambulatory surgery. And with the surgery. That's what it's all about. Right. Okay. Anything else more or less supports that? Mm -hmm. And you mentioned orthopedics as possible mm -hmm. and likely use. Currently, are the physicians uh, associated with okay, this is a Long Island Community Hospital. Um, 
when they do these procedures now, are they doing them typically in the hospital or do they have a surgical center somewhere? Or? They do not do any, any surgeries right now. It's being done in the hospital. As far as I know, I don't know all the operations currently. We're not fully merged after the last right. um, so I don't know the services they are providing, but the doctors for here, um, that would be the plan to have our, our ambulatory surgery. Uh, center outside of the hospital. Okay. Um, so a lot of the doctors um, have physician practices with near the hospital. Right. right. Um, yeah. We actually have a practice here in Nine Village Green, um, mm -hmm. which is an operation. So mm -hmm. we have a presence here, and that of course we set down on Hospital Road, on Sills Road, and a few practices that are already joined. But the ultimate plan is you will at some point in the future have total control of the Long Island Community yeah. Hospital, right? Yeah, my understanding, well, not that I'm an expert, but I mean, I've had three of them myself, but my understanding is that most of the these procedures are done at, at, at facilities off of the campus of Long Island Community Hospital, most of them up and down with Sills, Sills Road, which is just a lot of medical, medical practices, uh, practices right. up there. Yeah. You'll be doing general anesthesia, local anesthesia, mm -hmm. deep general. sedation, the full range of... Mm -hmm. Yeah, the endoscopy is usually, depending on the procedure, can be conscious sedation as well, so not fully sedated, but um, it is um, anesthesia, obviously, the answer. Depends on how big of a masochist you are. This is a root plan, and what is depicting are uh, the um, Curves and locations for the mechanical equipment that you can see on the roof. And the hash area around it are catwalks for servicing the equipment. So, so just to clarify, all the mechanical <laughs> equipment, including generator and everything else, will be on the roof of the building. Correct. Um, with the exception, I guess, of the of, of the uh, power company transformers, right? That's right. Yes. Yep. And there is some movement that you have to make of some of the of the uh, uh, power poles. Outside. Yeah, we can discuss that um, with, with our site civil engineer. Okay. All right. yeah, sorry, ben. So all power equipment is all, all equipment is on the roof. All the HVAC equipment and the right. generator are on okay. the roof. Yeah. All right. And set back from Main Street. Set yeah, we kept it as far back from Main Street as it could, so you don't need to see it. The transformer currently on the west side of the building and the remaining. So there's a parapet. That, okay. uh, how yes. high does that go up? A couple of feet? 40, 30, 40, 42, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, and uh, this is the parking lot side, this is the street side, and we're taking out the current elevation. We're putting back an elevation that's made of um, curtain wall glass and metal panel. Uh, it's a little hard to tell from these flat elevation drawings, but we will be, be presenting uh, now uh, more realistic renderings to the architectural review board. This hasn't happened yet. Okay. And we're treating both ends as equal. So we're looking yeah, at it looks exactly yeah. So we're seeing that we're we are we are considering Main Street and also Terry Street equal as equal entrance points and main entrance. But you're not finalized on that. We're not finalized on that. We're still going through that final design. We're putting them through. Right. This next one just shows an electric view of those two elevations and it shows the equipment on the roof. Um, so uh, the, the main street side is just a side in front of the here, and here's the uh, parking lot. That's basically just. I'm sorry, this is the main street side, and this is the parking lot. So the bottom is right. Bottom the main street. Right. Yeah. Angela wants to 
Good evening, everybody. My name is Dan Boyle. Right now I'm with BHP Engineering. We're at 100 Motor Park Way in Papa, 178. Um, as Jim said, I'm the civil engineer for the project. Uh, and I'll try to take you through the extensive site work uh, that goes along with this building. Um, mainly, as, as we indicated, the main entrance will be on the south side of the building and the rear of the building. So really the only site modification that we're proposing is to create a curved island and a single lane drop off to sort of segregate the patients being dropped off at the front entrance um, from traffic moving in, in and out and around that parking lot. Um, I, I feel that that's a, it's a safer way to protect the patients that are being dropped off and there'll be less confusion uh, for, for people trying to pass the building and exit the parking lot. Um, we're not talking about the front of the building now. This is the rear of the building, which will be exactly. The you say the front of the building, you really mean the rear of the building. Right. 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 <laughs> so, I, I can use north and south. That, that yeah, means. I think that would probably be better. Right. Most of us are probably the front of the building right. on Main Street, right? So, sure. Sure. Yeah. So, so really, the the, the Main Street side, um, the you know, we're proposing just to replace any curb sidewalk or um, um, pavement. That, that's disturbed. Um, as far as just a quick question, sure. that will not at all be a patient drop off. However, it could be. So, and I, I it, um, it can be. It, it can be. I, I think if people coming from public transportation or or they just end up on that side side of the building, but we're anticipating you know the majority of people be dropped off in the back. Um, we're creating a nice um, drop curve area where. You know, even wheelchairs can be, be pushed in. And, and well, we'll probably lose about four or five parking spaces then. Uh, so as of right now, we are not proposing a reduction in any of, of any spaces uh, okay. in the lot, in the municipal lot located. But you place. will have signage then in front of the building that directs people. There there will be a sign that, that points to the drop off. Okay. And it will be do not enter signs for, for to prevent wrong way movement. All right, gotcha. Yeah. Didn't the Board yeah. reach an agreement with you on the rental of parking space as well back here? Um, well, and, and I was going to get to that, but I believe NYU purchased the lot across the street from Terry, or across oh, Terry okay. Street, okay. Um, and they currently own it, and that's yeah. intended to be uh, used for staff okay. and parking. I'm just thinking, too, because of the nature of ambulatory surgeries, you're under sedation, you have to have the driver come pick you up, you're not always with it when you leave, yeah. so... To have a safe area to pick people up is mm -hmm. very important. Yep. We agree. Yeah. And we do have a greeter in the front on um, at Main Street. And right. both entrances have a have a somewhat of a waiting area and a and a concierge or a greeter. So anybody can stretch. So if somebody does walk up to the front yeah. Main Street yeah. side, you're going to allow them in. Yeah, they're yeah. all allowed in as well. That's why we're treating both. Okay. Well, but you don't require removing any spaces in front of the facility Correct. for a drop-off zone. Correct. All drop-offs will be in the rear of the building. Okay. So you're gonna have to consider that signage so people know that. Because you could tell them until you blew in the face and they're gonna still try you're to jump to make a problem, they'll be told which way to go. And with today right. with everybody's right. using the apps in my chart, yep. they're automatically told where to enter and everything it's all part okay. of the equipment. Go ahead, carry on. Uh, okay, so um, as was previously indicated, we're going to shift the loading dock from the south side of the building uh, at the south, was at the southeast corner around the corner of the building to have a side, a side entry. We did provide C two O two, which shows some some truck movements in the drop off and then and then leaving the site. Uh, it's anticipated that deliveries will be done in smaller box trucks. There won't be any. Uh, you know, tractor trailers or, or larger vehicles. And I believe John Kirk if I'm wrong, will be at early hours in the morning and once before um, rush hour and before the parking lot is being used. They will not will they be loud in any way to do a five-story apartment building directly across the street from the Yeah, I'll have that one too. So will they be after a certain hour in the morning so they're not disturbing people to sleep? Well village code is 7 a.m. 7 a.m. Yeah. And so there's more trucks or vans. Um, yeah. I like yeah. this graphic you have with the backup. Yeah. Uh, the following sheet is just the demolition plan that shows the proposed removals. So if you put the C301, 
Yeah, see, the one we talked about just that what we're going to do to service the building with utilities. Currently, there's a water, uh, an underside water line, and a septic system that are located in the municipal lot on the south side of the building. We're proposing to disconnect all the roads with one through pollution control. The health department to have the system, the septic system abandoned um, in accordance with their regulations. And we're proposing a brand new uh, water service, domestic water service, um, and sanitary connection to the village sewer system uh, off the main street side of the building. So the water service comes in from Terry Street and not from Little Street. Right now it does, yes. I believe it's a one, it's one small line. I think it's a two-inch line that comes in. I'm sorry. You need much more than that. Well, we're we're actually proposing two two-inch lines um, off of Main Street for the domestic. Um, and then there's an existing six-inch sanitary, um, excuse me, fire uh, line that comes in off Main Street that's gonna remain. There's yeah, standpipes on that building. Right? There, there will be a new, there will be a new fire department connection installed at the northeast corner of the building. Okay. As far as stormwater, there's currently a uh, malfunctioning roof drain that discharges to the municipal lot surface parking on the, the east side of the building. Um, we're proposing to put that internal to the to the wall and and connect underground to. The existing system. We're not increasing impervious areas as a result of this project, so there should be no generation of additional stormwater runoff as a result. I don't know if I can think of anything else to tell you. The so we did you did mention the electric service. Uh, right now, there are existing uh, low voltage and electric lines at the southwest, southeast, and in the middle of the east side of the building. We're trying to work with uh, PSC and G to have those poles um, taken down and uh, rerun underground, um, and that's that's the goal for that. So those are ongoing conversations at this point. Right, that's correct. Sir. So the goal is to take the poles from Terry Street, power from there, bring that underground to a pole on uh, closer to Ryder Avenue, and come back up there, and then bring it to a new location, another pole um, away from. The pole. So something that we discussed in the scoping meeting was the uh, impact perhaps to uh, your neighbors while enduring construction. Uh, I imagine you've reached out to them by now and have to chat, chat mm -hmm. with them or um, share with them. We haven't started those conversations yet. We kind of want to get through okay. the process here. Um, well, that, that certainly should be. Right. We did, we, we did have a conversation with the neighbor to our east, east, uh -huh. um, so you're still working through that. Okay, good. Can we talk about parking a little bit? I know that you're not required to provide parking, um, but what kind of, how many staff do you see being on an average day or hour, uh, seven to seven? Is that right? We, we're assuming it's right now be seven to seven, five days a week, okay. and possibly Saturdays. And um, you know, as we open, it's going to be a more of a soft opening, I'm sure. It could be increasing volume as more, you know, more patient volume for people going. Saturday hours? Saturday so? might be seven to three. It would be somewhere around there. I don't think it would be seven to seven. This will have to be worked out. Okay. Um, and we are still working through the staffing. Um, as far as the staff would be here, it's something that's being worked out. Okay, because there are a lot of exam rooms, and I, I know yeah. they're not all filled. Yeah, because they will be. But. Yeah, um, because we're just trying to, just try, to, you know, for the community's sake, we're just trying to figure out what the pressure on the lots are going to be, because we all know patch on credit parking is premium. Right, and it's always overturned. You know, they're always turning over, and also as much as as large as the second floor might be, and it's all land search. All of those rooms are not filled at the same time. So mm -hmm. as much as we have 24, 30 recovery days. Those recovery bays is the one patient. So a patient's not in recovery who has left that recovery, went to surgery, it's going to go back to that recovery, so it's not getting back to the way. There's always going to be you know, a turn And you're providing 25 spaces in the Terry Street lot, you know, across the street. So far. Yeah, so far. Yeah, we develop that entire lot. That will help. Yeah. The, um, and, and also, if we're maintaining it, you know, we can, we can you know, make it more dense if we have that way. There and we can have staff that you know double park those cars within the lot and keep it more dense. Sure. And we we did do. I apologize if I if I if I'm stepping in on what you're going to say, John. But um, we we did 
do a comparison to the village code mm -hmm. if it was a retail building yeah. um the, the ratio for retail building is 150 per square foot mm -hmm. plus or i'm sorry one space for 150 square feet plus employees for medical office it's just 150 square feet right. so with the additional build out of the mezzanine you're only looking at like 10 a 10 space increase and we're providing 25. that's what i wanted to hear was what's comparison was so considering all buildings we don't believe there'll be a, a major impact you know if this was a retail you'd, you'd see this a similar you know if it was an active retail you'd see a similar right probably more of a demand because there'd be no parking across the area yeah. this is a mon monday to saturday operation right right now yeah. the facility is closed on sunday yeah. And it starts at what time in the morning, did you say? 7 a.m. Most likely. So the staff might be there sooner because they're getting okay. ready for the cases. Right. So they'll probably be there earlier. And they may stay a little later. I do frequent this area quite a lot. And I have noticed since Burlington closed, this lot is almost never even remotely close to the informed. No. Yeah. Well, because it's nothing, it's not well planted in, in yeah. very, yeah. We encourage the staff not to park in. Well, Mr. Chairman, you did bring up the whole construction phase, which is, I assume, significant to this. What What is the general timetable? I'm assuming you have a pretty well orchestrated plan of attack of how you're, I mean, there's not often that we have literally raising the roof of the building. Yeah. Um, so there's going to be heavy equipment that's going to need to be brought in. And so we, we what do. is the general consensus? Well, we, have, we actually have representatives from our contractor, EW Howell, here, and they can, they can fill you in if you want. And they can describe everything. Yeah, right. I mean, there's, uh, we've gone through a uh, a staging plan, mm -hmm. uh, and we also will go through that with our own staff to go through a life safety plan and, and uh, a whole safety plan if they do construction as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, they can explain how they would approach it. Okay. Good evening, sir. State name and address for the record. We let us go and speak. Uh, Chris Capodegro, EWL Construction Group 245, Newtown Road, Bayview, New York. Good evening, everyone. Tom Miranda from EWL. Uh, you want to Did you want to see the logistics plans? Uh, yes. Posted, right? you know, we're not sure they were given a copy of the list of the name. Yeah, could you just? Yeah. I know what it was. Yeah, it's a bit. Oh, it's a bit. Okay, we can do that. Okay, we can do that. All right. I have one question. What's what? What is the plan as far as when? When does uh, NYU Millennium Building really want to get going with this? And when, when do you want to put the first shovel in the ground? We hope that by the end of the summer. Okay. Go ahead, Tom. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, we've uh, generated a logistics plan, and we've had some uh, preliminary discussions earlier on with uh, some of the members of the board here. Um, effectively. Um, uh, and, and again, on a broader term, we're looking to tackle most of the construction from the south side of the building, what you, some of you would reference the back or the back side of the building, not the main street side. Um, as, as you would see in the logistics plan, uh, we've highlighted a couple of areas. Uh, primarily, again, on the south side, we're looking to stage some of the port of sands. Uh, just to the east side of it, there will be, there will be some activities in terms of crane and lifting. I mean, uh, we referenced uh, earlier on about steel and lot, lot of, lots of those activities. We will set up a crane. Um, we will do those lifts. We pl the plan uh, for the crane will be probably in a, in a two to three week duration. We have yet to work out all those details. While we'll do that, we'll put some temporary fencing within a parking lot, some of the protective uh, coverage areas. We will remove that as soon as those activities are finished. And we're limiting, and we're trying to limit, I should say, state that, as much as we can around the perimeter of the back of the building. There are some activities obviously on the north side, the main street side uh, as well. Uh, part of the work that uh, occurs there is the storefront, um, the curtain wall as was referenced earlier. And uh, uh, we're 
we're very focused on maintaining, we know there's traffic on Main Street, and we're looking to route uh, the majority of our uh, construction activities to the south side of it. Uh, as I think you referenced earlier, the south parking lot was acquired by NYU as well, and that was a bit of a blessing in disguise because Obviously, we're going to use that as a, as a queuing up and logistics uh, part of our planning strategies. We do need trailers, as you know. We do need storage. There are lots of construction uh, boxes as well from the various disciplines across the board. And uh, as such, uh, we plan to use that area to stage a lot of that, a lot of construction vehicles, you know, whether it be electrical plumbing, all those various trades, um, the parking there will be uh, within that particular area and, and also secured. Uh, the site in itself will have temporary fencing around the entire perimeter, um, fully secured through gates. We'll have some signage both on the north side as well as the south side and uh, the parking lot as well. Um, most of the demolition activities, uh, initially day one we'll call it, will be uh, to do the demo. Demo will primarily happen again through the south side. Removing that roof, that structure, we get to figure out some of those particular logistics, but we know it's going to move off that, that back area. At a high level uh, flight, uh, as we look at how the, we procure all the materials and move them through, we're really looking at some of this highway coming down 112 southbound, hitting Main Street, make those couple of turns, and coming back into Terry not keeping to any of the other side streets that are, I mean, that's the really that makes the most sense in terms of the main route and access to whether it be steel delivery or any of the other materials that are, you know, going on on the, uh, within the facility. The other, the other component as well that I do want to mention to the group is that the crane is one of the initial operations, but we have to be mindful that through the course of the project, we also have you know, mechanical equipment that will be set up at some point in time, the generators that will be there, you know, all those kinds of activities, roofing. Um, so we will have a need to temporarily close that parking lot. And the way we're looking to approach it at the moment is really do those off hours, put some temporary fence, make sure we schedule these early in the morning or off hours so we impact, uh, we have as minimal impact as we can uh, in those back parking lot areas. Um, that's primarily any any other questions that the board may have with respect to no, I, I just would ask again that you know you sit down with the neighbors and uh, let them know when something's going to impact their area uh, because that'll go a long way towards uh, solving any potential problem. Uh, I know that that parking lot in the back will be sectioned off. So right now you could basically travel from the post office area all the way straight through to Rider Avenue, that's going to go away, and that's because you're going to have to section that area off. Um, and that will remain that way throughout the project, or for the majority of the project, majority. that's how we see it. Okay. That also, that's a good point. It also includes the front. Um, we're very much in tune with the public access way, so we're looking to put um, protective coverage in the front of the, we'll call it the north side, the main street right. side of it. Um, there's yeah. obviously sidewalks, there's a lot of traversing that happens both east and west, uh, so we'll protect that particular area. Uh, we'll, look, we're looking to move, move it out as quickly as we finish with construction <laughs> for the obvious reasons, the sooner the better for everyone, uh, but we're very much uh, in tune with safety and any activity that happened above, all those things happen, that protective uh, coverage will be there. Um, and we'll obviously have discussions with the village on that on that front. Uh, you did mention an important part as well. Um, on the fencing side, we, we're planning to have that on a schedule side for the majority of the project. Usually when we hit substantial completion, which is around the 95 percentile, that is when we begin to look at how do we break the project down, do the cleanup, remove the fences, and you know the nature of, of, of the work that happens back there. It is um, a significant project. There will be a lot of activities uh, on every front. Um, you know, the program that NYU is, has developed here um, is, is very significant from a sense of, you know, all the utilities that are provided within the building, whether it be mechanical, plumbing, um, and obviously uh, very heavy in the services. So um, we, do, uh, we do expect there's a lot of, um, you know, activity, construction activity. Um, we did make a brief request to the village that there may be some deliveries again off hours on the front of the main street side. 
it is an opening, uh, an area there as well. And uh, but again, we're very uh, aware of the nature of the traffic there. Again, off our in a very limited basis. I have a question. Sure. Um, the parking lot for the postal service, the one just west of the east of the postal service loading area, is a very very sensitive balance because the postal service is very parking intensive and the laundry kingdom is very intensive. So if you could try to keep your trades out of those spots, because basically during the day, every one of those spots is spoken for at this point. So yeah, it, it's um, the actual, the, the logistics plans indicate just that, that we're planning to all construction vehicles, which we have control of, would be directed to the uh, soft lot, which NYU recently acquired as well. Uh, under a gated control measure. So trades will be driving construction vehicles going to their companies to the site, at their personal vehicles to the site, as a Um A bit of both, right? Yeah. So it, you, you'll have material deliveries, which will come through the main gates on the south entrance of Terry. And so those deliveries will happen periodically based on, on the various schedules. Uh, the personnel that show up every day for the project, whether they drive a car or a pickup, would go on the south lot. Okay. They would park there, traverse Terry, and obviously go into the project okay. site, put in the All I want to point out here is that the whole post office thing was a multi-year battle to get straightened out that's working right now. So um can you can you speak to site security uh during construction and then perhaps the applicant can speak to uh site security uh, while the building is open, cameras, etc. Um what the plan is. So First of all, most importantly, during the during the uh, construction phase, uh, three o'clock in the morning, we want to make sure that there's some form of security. How are you going to handle that? So, um, the, the, the simple answer is everything will have temporary fencing. The the site has to be locked down for a bunch of reasons, um, mostly on the safety side, as you mentioned. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, there's always a concern of somebody accessing you know, purely by access. So we're planning to put a lot of signage, obviously, within the, um, the fencing that we're protecting uh, the, the, the construction site. Uh, they're gated. We'll have gates. They're going to be locked, open up and in the morning. We do typically install a CCTV camera system. You do? Okay. Yeah. And that's monitored. Obviously. Yes. Correct. And recording. Yes. And you have signs up to that effect. Yeah, we don't always advertise that. That's all right. Whatever. No, that's on a case by case basis. Yes. Okay. Um, and then I guess from the applicant standpoint, I know that you're going to put a card access system in the building right. so that your employees can obviously enter yeah. and exit. And at some point in time, the door gets open and the public can go in there. Oh, right. So we um, would have a guard at each entry point. Okay. Uh, as well as a concierge person at staff. Okay. Um, throughout the day and until the building closes. Um, and then we do have cameras. A lot of cameras on the exterior are you know, all entry points on all four sides of the building. Um, high as well, that kind of overlooks the parking area that's behind the building, right? Um, and in the front as well. And then we, cameras inside the building as well, and you see in the entry area is a meeting area. Okay. On, on the safety side, one, one thing worth noting, you know, we're active there every day. Um, the gates are going to be checked every day. Right. Um, if there's any motion one night or through the course of the period of the day, there's superintendents. We'll have a couple of superintendents on. Uh, there's all kinds of watchful eye through the course of the, of the project. And I, the very uh, process oriented in terms of lockdown and how we, uh, you know, we come in the next morning. So and and construction during the construction phase, what times? What will be the time that you will operate and work at the building? Uh, generally speaking, it, it'll be a 7 to a 3.30, 3 o'clock operation. Okay. Um, we will, uh, we are looking to potentially make some of the lifts on a Saturday, again, to uh, mitigate the impact on the parking and some of the temporary lifts, uh, mechanical, uh, electrical, those kinds of things on the rooftop area. Um, but uh, uh, again, to the east side, we just show that as a, as a very uh, limited uh, crane lift and then mechanical operation. And um, do you anticipate any lifts from the front of the building because the replacement of the mezzanine? No, the, the, the lift to the extent of the curtain wall 
would probably be like a scissor lift or something to that effect. And we have provided a control fencing also right at the front of the building. The building is somewhat recessed. Yeah, that's a we're, big, we're, big we're, sidewalk there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so we're taking, we're taking, uh, we're staying within the confines of the, the building perimeter or the property, the property line. line and uh, gating that as well, controlling it. And uh, but obviously, look, if if during the course of the day we needed to adjust it by the nightfall, we would bring it obviously back into its original. That's actually a, que a question. I, you're probably not the right person to ask here, but on the team. But um, where is the property line on here? I was I was actually going to ask if there's a plan to soften the front of that because it is just like a, a wide gulf of concrete. Um, so I don't know if there's any plan if the planters would enter them. Yeah, we're still but working. I don't remember where the village line is. Yeah, the village. It's actually that where that wall extends out. So we've got ten feet the actual facade of the building at okay. one angle. And right, I think it sets back 10 feet. Yeah. Like it's even further back from the property line. So the property line from the face of the building is 10 feet towards Main Street. Okay. So we do have some buffer there. And we've been back and forth about how much landscaping, what type of landscaping. Yeah, it's just something to that's that. soften it up a bit. Yeah, yeah, so if you look at C201, we're showing an area of uh, like brick pavers. Okay. Um, that, okay. that would be the, the African property. Yeah. Nice. Um, it start to soften up that concrete sidewalk. Yeah. A bit. Oh yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, from my experience, I have a north-facing home in the village with a very shallow front yard, so I play with snow never melts. So it's um, it's com you know, it, it it is more difficult to soften a north-facing space like this, especially with two square space, but it could use a little something. And your signage is probably the thirty minutes. Then the Right, yeah, we're on the strike. Yeah, we can put signage. Um, the word located right there. I put it on that wing wall, mm -hmm. where you actually can see it from both sides. Yeah, and then we've got the entry, mm -hmm. and then mine on the walls. I know these things are hard to pin down, but obviously we're dealing with a lot of professionals here, and this is not your first rodeo. Well, how long do you think this whole build out, the construction phase, will last? You mentioned late summer, possibly to start commencing. So. What is the general goal of when this might be wrapped up? So we've been working towards 16, 18 months. 16, 18 months. Okay. Right. okay. Again, we've exhausted the in work sessions, not in work sessions, 12 sessions, it's helping sessions. Um, these plans and, and have drilled down on a lot of these points um is there anything else that you gentlemen want to present to us before we ask for any public comment that might be here tonight obviously what we're going to need from you going forward is uh, once you decide on the the uh, elevations on the front and the back we're going to need to see those but we could do that as a separate kind of uh application uh which would include We'll, we'll roll all that into the uh, architectural review committee. Um, We're hoping to be ready for you by May. Yeah, That's and that, that would be good. Um, so I'll ask you guys, unless you have anything else, or does any, any other member of the board have anything at this point? Thank you very much. Yeah, you guys can have a seat. Yeah. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to make any comments? Either for or against the project. Please come forward, man. Please state your name and address for the record and tell us what's on your mind. Hi, everybody. Hi, how are you? Sarah Seglio, um, home address, Six Terry Drive, Kings Park, catch dog address, 198 202 East Main Street, adjacent to the project. Okay. Um, the Medi Health building that's next door to Bronson. You've been here for um this is our 19th year um at that location having gone through the board and everything when we came into town um we were they said they did not speak to us they did come to us um about the project on um, the read a statement you say that they did come to you they did come to us okay what is the nature of your business what what is the nature of your Medi health business? medical pc we're okay. next to both burlington to medical so, service and, and that's what uh, physicians um internal medicine physical okay. therapy and neurology okay 
and we've been there since you guys are we to opened in east. March of 2004. To the west of we are to the east. the east. To the east of Ronald. Okay. To the east of Ronald. The west is the shops. Okay. Um, where the property owns 188 uh, 202 East Main Street, directly adjacent to the NYU site with the butt of the property of the project before the board. We were first made aware of the scope of the project a few weeks ago. Um, upon review of the plans of the not engineers, but at the neighboring property, we simply wanted to ensure the plans would in no way have any impact on our legal property description or lines, and that no boundaries are infringed upon either by easement, taking, or other manner. A cause of this concern was contact received by NYU and PSCNG in the last month, in which a representative shared that a request was made by this applicant to move a utility pole on our property to a different location in order to facilitate part of the construction before the board. PSCNG at that meeting said they would not allow the raising of the roof unless our um, power pole was moved. Um, the moving of the pole will have a detrimental impact on our business, limit our parking lot. They plan on taking uh, a couple of hour spaces for the pole. Right. Right. Our parking lot. Right. My parking lot abuts the village parking lot. Are you there. saying the PSC and G would take space from you? Well, the pole would yes. be moved from uh, next to the building, right? Across the parking lot when they take the line underneath the main parking lot. They would come up with transformers on the main parking lot pole. And in order to secure that pole, they would put an island in our parking lot. On your property? My property. You have a pulling space behind your building. I have, a, I have a, like a 10 space parking lot. Right, okay. okay so, so they so want to take at least one or more of our parking spaces and put a wide wire across our parking lot with an island. I'm not parking. So, um, and this will obviously cause a disruption of our business. Um, of course. They did, um, well, let me finish this statement and then I'll go sure. on. An additional reason for concern with the comment received from the applicant themselves, that if we did not agree to their requests, they would they may go after our pro property through eminent domain. They can't do this. I'm not an attorney, but I don't understand how this private business would have a private right of action for that relief. Again, our concerns that the approval being sought today would in any way bestow any of our property rights to this applicant. Okay. Um, now, uh, hearing the actual scope of the project tonight, which brought up many more concerns than I actually had for prior, prior to tonight. Um, the loading dock is one of the concerns. Our patients use our south side entrance the same way as a main drop off. Um, this 16 to 18 months disruption for our patients when many of them are disabled, many of them come either with SCAT transportation from the county and the private ambulance, private car, Uber, Lyft, get dropped off in the back of our building. With the fencing, which I have no idea, we were discussing fencing, um, we want to know how the loading docks can impact our patients' ability to get back and forth into our parking lot. Um, what type of vehicles are going to be used in that loading dock? How frequently are they going to make deliveries? Are the delivery is going to be constant. Are our patients not going to have access to our parking lot, um, either from the main parking lot or directly going into our parking lot? Um, will we be blocked and for how long? I mean, this is a major, major project. project. Um, the um, Another one of the concerns is uh, the facade type of our building. They're, they butt right up against each other. So when this construction is going on in our building, what's the impact on the front of our building? The access for our patients to get back and forth, either through the front or the back of the building. Um, they they meant you picking up the parking lot for the sewer drain. Uh, again, another concern, how are my staff going to get to work, number one, and how our patients are going to get access to their medical care. Um, that was for the runoff pipe. And also, will that runoff pipe disrupt our water service? At the time we had the meeting, they were just discussing um, um, they were discussing um, digging up the water pipe um, for the runoff. I don't know if that'll disrupt any of our water service. Right now, um, they only discussed disrupting our electrical service. 
which they were unsure how long that that would be. They said they would try to do it over a weekend. Um, I do have somebody, I know somebody who works at Con Ed and said, I brought him, you know, I told him about the project. I told him what was going on. I said, nothing ever goes the way it's planned. So if they tell you it'd be close three days, it'd be a week. If they tell you a week, it could be a month. So they said they would bring in generators um, if anything disrupted our service. Um, the generators also became a concern to me because they said they're going to be running generators in the parking lot. What's what's the noise level? When we're in running operations and, ha and half of our office is on the phone conducting business with insurance companies or attorneys or other medical doctors, what's the what's the disruption to our practice with generators running all day long during the project, or at least from seven to three, whatever their um, whatever their construction hours were going to be? Um, the um, the porta potties that can, I mean they said they're talking about everything that can be at the south entrance. So our patients are going to be walking and driving past porta potties in order to get into our office. Um, he talked about the equipment being in the 35 spot lot that he bought from the village, but he also talked about all the construction crew parking in there. So I find it hard to believe you can put all the equipment in there and put all the people that are going to be parking to work on the building. Um, the fencing, again, I said that was a, a big concern. Um, and um, the um, PSCNG did tell us they would not move the poll without our approval. So that was how we left it up to the community. I asked PSCNG in the meeting straight out. I said, not that I'm going to, but what if they say no? I mean, it is impacting us. They're saying they're not taking any village parking spaces. They're not. They're taking. They're trying, they're attempting to take a private space from or at least one or two from me. Now, right now, when we get our when we get plowed and we get plowed, you know, before seven in the morning, and, you know, we make sure our streets are clean front and back, according to the village rules. Um, my plow guy comes in, we're a rep panel, he does our lot, and he pulls back out. Now I have an island in my lot. They said they're gonna have to put an island in my parking lot in order to move the electric. But I have not agreed to it yet. And I know PSNG did say at the meeting they were not going to go forward with the plans until they had our, our um, agreement. Um, that's basically our concerns about the project. So I, I think your concerns are valid. Um, and I think what needs to happen, because this board can't really mitigate these issues, but you're going to have to have a sit down and we're going to ask the applicant to do that to mitigate your concerns. I think that it's reasonable for them to do that and to you guys to at least work out something. I don't think we can work it out for you. We can't, they have to work it out. Okay. And, um, you know, and then next month, you guys are gonna come back here and you're gonna tell me, hey, we worked it out. Well, we worked out 90% of it. I mean, you know, there's give and take in life. So we're gonna have to do the best we can uh to, to mitigate as many of your concerns as possible yeah. uh, i know that there are solutions for most of the things you asked here i'm sure that with the brain trust that we have here that uh i mean these, these as as mr week said before this is not their first rodeo mm -hmm. and i'm quite sure that they've been in this particular situation before <clears throat> and and it's only proper and correct that um that we start off as good neighbors right mm -hmm. So yes. we thoroughly, I can speak for this board. We certainly do agree that, you know, uh, you guys are gonna have to have a sit down and go through these things. I suggest you, you know, put all your thoughts down and make sure you cover them all. And uh, we'll see where it sits next month. Okay. Is that fair? Yes. Thank you for coming down. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak for against John? <laughs> Sir, please come on. Good evening. Uh, what are the we're state against. names? We're not against and nothing like that. State name and uh, my name is Roberto Guardado. I'm the pastor of Resurrection Christian Church on 86 Derby Street. Um, we're most concerned. Uh, we would like to know about the public parking 
Uh, if they buy the property, I hear they buy the parking lot that is next no, to one. They're not buying, well, yeah, they bought that yeah, on Terry Street. Yeah. So, but I'm, I'm interested to know if the parking lot on X Burlington building is going to stay public. That's yeah, true, yeah. And, uh, parking yeah. from the road, they will still. Yeah, the public okay. Well. Okay. And what and and their hours of operation, you know, probably yeah. not going to interfere, yeah. we, especially with church services up there on a Sunday. Sundays and uh, nights on the weekdays. Right? Yeah. Right. If we have a, some uh, yeah. an activity, it's on the weekdays. It's a night. We don't interfere with the traffic. Something that uh, we work with a, uh, a congregation is to yeah. uh, bring your family in one car if possible to min minimize the traffic. I just want to explain. That um, I make a call one time to report a trailer was parking on the parking lot there. Yes, I choose. We did it because it was on some kind of unsafe. Safe. We didn't want the village to so I, I, like to, I didn't know. I want to know that nobody just drop it and left it in there. Also, the reason is safety because some kids ride the bicycles mm -hmm. and there, and the was very safe. It was holding on the bricks, right? I'm um, also one day I see lights. I didn't know that anybody was sleeping over in there at nighttime after a service. We came out with like a night thought it was light there. So I walked through the with, uh, with another partner to see where the electricity was coming from. Mm -hmm. We didn't know. We was neck right there. We want to help in any need that we can help anybody. Uh, and after that, after I close. walked there. Next day they block it out. I know it's private property, mm -hmm. right? But I don't. I don't want to. You that call take it that um. You know I'm reporting on. I don't want any, anything because I know that that is not mine. We thought nothing of it. <laughs> 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 so, I had no uh, idea. <laughs> I'm a happy. I'm a happy station at NYU. Yeah, you know. uh, from uh, Huntington. I like. I like the the, the technology that they have. And I think that they can, they're going to bring bless to, to this community with the service. Um, uh, but I need to talk a little bit with the community in that block, if mm -hmm. possible. It's, 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 it's families there, it's, it's kids in yeah. there, right? And one of my major concern is the traffic, all right? Um, uh, I say because I don't know the measure of this building and the measure of the Huntington building. You have the same kind of service over there. You have for serious there, like oncology service. No. Gastro. 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 You have gastro. Yeah, but not the All right. So um, I think you're talking about um, on uh, philosophy. philosophy. Yeah. yeah. Very different process there. Okay. Uh, but you, they mentioned that they would have office for physicians related to the service that you do. Yes. Small. All right. Uh, but yeah. they would see patients on a regular basis. That is close to the surgery patients that will come in the same day. And what I, I choose just to say, uh, bring information, the Huntington property has a ton of more parking lot. And it's very difficult to get a parking lot. Yeah. So if they're going, that parking lot that they pretend to use, the, the property that is next to our side is for employee. Just letting you to know, I'm not again. I'm not saying this because I'm against. Um, I'm sad because it's done. I go first on a group, um, uh, and uh, I, I'm I don't know what they didn't come here first, they knew, but uh, choose that concern. The parking lot, I just have one well, the parking lot will be available when you need it available, okay? okay. No problem, okay? So the only concern I do have though is yes, they could close the parking that was it's sure. in the construction, yes. Now that they put that on the closing, we cannot go to our back. Oh, yes. So like if we want to clean, you know, we yeah, we used to throw garbage out of there. Now we don't have access. Now, the, the, well, we have one situation. We prepare in a classroom and we have an old fashioned piano, big, big, big piano. Yeah. And we can- We can't take it out because- Take it out because it's black. We can bring a truck in to the back. Because it doesn't come from the front. And because no. because they bought the parking lot, they block it up. Yeah. I'm sure that they'll make a reasonable accommodation to help you get rid of the piano, won't you? <laughs> you know, we locked it off for safety reasons. Right. Yeah, we did have a trailer that's not belonging to us. Yeah, okay. um, and we couldn't get them out. We kept trying to get them out. Finally, they did leave. Okay. 
Um, so we blocked it off for safety. Another reasons. another question about the parking lot. You say they're going to fence the parking lot. Do you mean that parking lot? Yeah, no, so that will have fence around it, most likely on the three sides. We have to redo the fencing there. Um, but what the fencing that we talked about that we referred to in the in the village parking lot, that's temporary for construction only. I'm talking if you're going to bring a fence all the way down to the end of the property. On Terry Street. Just, yes, on Terry on Street. On our, but we're going to keep it on our property line. Yeah, no, I don't have a problem. Are you saying that you need to occasionally uh, open have, space have because an, our emergency exits it's are there. in the back? Okay. And there's no access from, from the east side, west side of the building? We do have, we, we need to have um, access to the front and the back. So we have an ex exit through the back door, we have back doors. For any any emergency, we need okay. access. That yeah, is this the okay. and what number are you at? 86. 86. We are so you're saying, you, all right, so if I understand what you're saying. You're saying by fencing off that parking lot in the future mm -hmm. with a permanent fence creates a hardship for you because we you have, have no access. access to the back of your property. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I understand it's the problem. I just say it for emergency. So maybe uh, you, maybe for an emergency thing, maybe you can work something out. Just keep that mobile board. It's that right. game that we have. No, I mean, had it looks pretty on the side before there's a fence. Uh, yeah. We don't need the space. We just need access. Well, listen, that's beyond the purview of this board right now. Yeah. My suggestion yeah. is you get his business card. Sit down, yeah. take yeah. your business card, yeah. and have a sit down and talk. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak for or against the application? And uh, what's your name? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, yes, I did come here for the better man to sit in, and I did get him. I didn't get another okay. I mean, well, they uh, said they didn't send it out registered as it was supposed to. Yes, be. and if you hadn't been Sherlock Holmes, you wouldn't have heard anything about it. <laughs> okay, well, that's why we postponed the hearing. Just for you, John. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we'll be back in a month for that. So, um, on this, uh, you know, there are lots of issues, obviously, but no, overall, it's a great plan uh, for the village, without a doubt. I just have one question, which is Newsday reporting will take three years for this to be done. And I think that they said it was 18 months. See, 18 months. Or so. 18 months? The construction phase, yes. Okay. And then opt from shovel to opening the doors. My understanding. Months. All right. Oh, pending no supply issues. Right. right. Pending a lot of things. Right. Well, that, that, that's the construction side because then we yeah. have to go through our uh, POH. Oh. Right. <laughs> so, we are, so it could be three years. Yeah. It could be. It could be. And the other thing I was just mentioned about security. Unfortunately, we have people in the village who are trespassers. Yeah. We have people who love smashing windows. Yeah. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a medicine of village. Um, so I think the once once we get more with this building built up, it becomes more vulnerable to that kind of vandalism and, and criminality, actually. So maybe the cameras should be identified. As you know, we're on, we're open, and we're spotting you. And maybe they need a security course once they start to put in more people, um, not more people, but more valuable stuff in the building that uh, people might want to destroy. Isn't that a shame? And it is, it is, it is. And unfortunately, this has been going on for many years now and has not shown that great a sign of a baby. No, I don't think, I think you're right, Joe. Right. So that's it. Thank you. See you, Thank next, you. See you next month. I'll count the days. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Anyone else wish to speak for against the application? Okay, so you guys have got a little homework this month. You meet with this young lady over here, meet with the pastor, work out a couple of details, okay? Uh, come back with all good positive results and everybody being happy. Uh, and I think you know we'll be able to move forward with the project, but I think there's a couple of sticking points in here that we have to iron out. But I think we're very close. Um, but you know, clearly there's some homework to be done. So what I'm going to do is uh, uh, entertain a motion to adjourn this project and keep it on the docket, obviously for next month, where we'll reconvene 
And hopefully everything will be good at that point in time. We're able to move off the dime. What's so the date of next month's hearing? Uh, it's uh, the fourth uh, Tuesday. The 25th of April. Fair enough for everybody. Uh, I, I want to thank you. Well, we do have a motion on the floor. I'll okay. get a second on the motion. I'm not sure who seconded that. Mr. Weeks. Mr. Weeks. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Any opposed? I want to thank you uh, all for uh, sticking with us and coming down tonight. Uh, looking forward to uh, having you back here with all smiles next month so we can get this project done. Fair enough? Yes. Okay. Have a great night. We do not have anything further on the docket. We don't have ARC issues. ARC control. Okay. Okay. ARC issues. So, can we have uh, okay. more? Is that, I'm sorry. Well, I'm sure that, no, is there a call on the dock? Uh, it's, it's, it's adjourned until they uh, come down with their final plan. Actually, it'll be next month. I don't think it's adjourned. So, it's not adjourned. So do we need to, do we, should we reopen this right now? Which one are we talking about? In other words, well, we did not adjourn. No, this, in other words, this was a hearing that I missed in, in January where we basically heard the applicant and then drafted a, uh, right. a reference letter to the Board of Trustees. Yes. The Board of Trustees has now responded to that yeah. asking for some changes. Changes, so okay. we need to reopen this and adjourn it. So you can deal with it next month. Well, actually, they haven't made it, technically haven't made applications of site plan view yet. This was an ex just you know one of these hearings that's hearing. associated with a reference to the but traditionally we reopen. Yeah, we probably should be re advertised. Did we advertise in that site? No, they didn't. So it was advertised. We did site plan and approval. Site plan and approval. We reopened yeah. and we have to deal with the final plan. Yeah, and you never voted to approve the site plan. Right. Yeah. Well, you don't want you don't vote to approve or deny those. the board, and then you draft it on. Right. It's part of it's for the special permit. Right. Which needs right. So that so no special permit has been granted because they're not satisfied with. All right. Okay. All right. I'll make a motion that in the matter of Nicole Capital LLC two thirty eight slash two fifty four West Main Street. Uh, that we reopen the previously closed application. I'll second this. Those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? If you guys carry on the conversation out in the hall, we still have business to conduct. Thank you. Have a good evening and safe home, okay? Thank you. Good night. Okay. ARC. Okay. ARC. Park. Okay. So we have 99 North Ocean Avenue, which is Contour Mortgage. Yes. Sign PVC lettering on the facade, Contour Mortgage, match up on the moon and on a, uh, an image of Long Island. Uh, we've asked the applicants to make a change on the window decal because it mirrors what he has on top. So he's going to resubmit it to make this the window decal half the size. And we're also adding on the door uh, lettering, which is somewhat like equal opportunity housing. He's going to submit the correct um, text for that as well. So but we're not, you're not ready to, to make a decision or approval on that yet. So yeah, we're approving it, but he's just going to be resubmitting the contour uh, on the window decal. Subject to so subject to your approval, approval of the, right. the resubmissions, which you've agreed to in principle. Right. No? Motion. I'll make a motion to prove that. Subject to. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? <laughs> keeping myself awake. Like this. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, Do you have anything else? Linda? Yeah. So the next one is at 224 East Main Street. They, the applicant was in here for planning. So we forgot about the sign, which is already up. Uh, it's Mar Sierra Bar and Grill. Uh, they just replaced the sign that was already there before in the, the past. You like the sign? It's fine. 
Because motion on the so after, after the fact, I guess we'll approve it. No, that okay, motion. Motion. <laughs> And I'll second. Mr. Logan seconded. Motion made you seconded also in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. You got more? Yeah, the final one is Value Restaurant at 3 East Main Street. This is for the TV. Uh, the TV screen, a 21 by 27 inch TV screen, which is going to be showing a. Um, a video moving. Uh, this was approved by the mayor, so we are going. The board of trustees had no problem with the moving sign, though I made a recommendation that everybody's yeah. going to want one, but they'd rather have that than sandwich signs. Sandwich. So it's either sandwich. or. Sandwich. sandwich. It's be either or. And the code is silent on these moving signs. Yeah. Well, I mean, they need to draft some legislation yeah. about. Get ahead of it. Like, like, like 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 well, we talked about this last month. Well, we saw the video that he was putting in there, which was here. My grandmother died. I know. <laughs> I would know. I had probably evil excuse. I'm sorry. <laughs> She's 95. Oh, she was. <laughs> so, <laughs> we saw the video that he's putting in there, which is a high end looking film. Where is it going exactly? Uh, where his menu board was before. Our concern at first was that, well, this is what's going in there now. Yeah. What's going to happen when he changes it or anybody else on Main Street? But, um, what about one of the other try. restaurants? One of, one of, so the size yeah, is 21 inches by 27 inches? Yeah, it's the same uh, size as his menu. As his little menu. Because he actually alarmed me at one point. Can I gesture toward that TV? And I'm like, what? So obviously he didn't mean that. Yeah. <laughs> um, we did mention, the last time we saw him, we did mention about the sandwich board signs that we said he had Re up and that's the only He can't down. have any more sandwich. He says it's going right. completely because of this. Tonight, so. All right. So somebody might want to reach out to him and tell him he can't have the sandwich boards and that many boards. And he, he alluded to that fact that that probably should be part of the, part of the record. Yeah, record. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. No so, yeah we, we did have concerns about um, this new device. And but this goes actually on the inside of the window. Right. No, no, no it's on the facade on the building. On the outside. Yeah. Put it in a box. In a box. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a screen. So, I mean, what's the design between that and, and I mean, other than the fact that it's moving. So what, is, what, is, what is the light output? How many lumens is it putting out? Is it? It's a TV. It's not It's not a sign like I he, have. He, he, I asked him, he told me that the only way you can decipher anything is if you're standing, you know, in front of it. With right a, in front you of it. it. That's just driving down. I think that would be the safe. concern of anybody who's concerned about public safety is that if, if every establishment along Main Street decides to put these up, if you're just, you know, Perceived by light from all directions, right. you're trying to drive. That's the thing that obviously you, want to avoid. you have to be right in front of it too. But the code is silent on this. There's nothing we well, can do. Well, the problem is that right now we have no restrictions on size. Right, right, right. So somebody could put a TV if they But want. another board has now telling us that they want this sign. Point taken. No, the board didn't discuss it. We just brought it up and well, said, listen, before we go anywhere with this, does anybody have a problem with it? Do you have a problem with it? I brought up the fact that everybody on Main Street's going to have one, but then it's going to be a funny thing that, that you have to be right in front of it to be able to see it. But well, the problem is that but, these these flash video flashes. Yeah, and there's not, and that's what is already it's already an issue driving down Main Street certain days and nights. Right. We all know that. I know. And with flashing involved, this can cause a major safety. I, I have been to communities, actually the same community that gave me the original idea for five after five, where where a lot of stores have right. bigger things than that in the windows, and it is distracting at night. And what it is, it's the changing of the light yeah. in different colors they flash. Even the sign on the side of the roof is it's very it can be very distracting when you're driving. It's, it's not that easy to navigate Main Street in the evening anyway, as it is. David has a beautiful building. Yeah. It is a gorgeous yeah. building. And I yeah. don't think it, it really is. It's, it's beautiful that the doors, the windows that open are gorgeous. He's a good proprietor, but it's not only what he is going to do, which is always the issue when we start to allow these things to creep in. We do bring that up. The only thing I think we can do is, is if there's any way to encourage the, the legislative body of this community they that they need to something. take this up yeah. Yeah. before it gets out of hand. Yeah. He told me tonight, as I'm sure is his intent, it's a marketing tool for him. Right. There's a lot of competition in the restaurant. 
Is this on the main street? Yeah. This will, he's very excited about the way it's going to show the way the food's prepared and, you know, from start to the table. And, um, but he also has an alcove that he could put this in that would not be distracting the drivers, as do many of the people. If you guys have a hair in power, though, someone comes to you and they're having a display that's going to show up that can be seen from 10 feet away, it's very close. So if they have a hair in power still, like that's not going to fit with the, uh, the architecture and the streetscape. So, I think. Yeah, I think I think the issue is we don't know in the future what people will put on the screens. Like some people may have something yeah. that's rather um yeah. it's static, yeah. and then other it's ones will not. Well, it's something we can certainly talk about. No, I know it'd be and better if the board addressed it. Absolutely. Aside, aside, yeah. aside as well. And, and I yeah, yeah, that even David, with what he showed us at work was beautiful. Oh, sure. Okay. But Cheers. in the course of the conversation, he did mention that well, he might change it. So now, that makes sense. You don't know, have the same thing up forever, ever. Right. I tried. I tried. She tried. She tried. You guys have. Oh, content neutral too. Well, we already told them. Right. 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 Yeah, actually, I apologize, and Mr. Logan made a good point. In proper Robert's rules, we should have brought a motion up and before we started talking Correct. about it, but we didn't. So, um, well, I'll make a motion that the um, application of uh, Gallo, um, Gallo Restaurante um, be approved, subject to uh, stipulations agreed upon that he would remove all uh, of the um, sandwich board signs that he currently has been using uh, in, uh, in replace it with this. Um, uh, video board. Um, I don't know what else I can say. As presented to the ARC. Second on Second. Question on motion. I have one. Yeah, so in the past, when things have been granted and it's a new technology or whatever, and if we find that it doesn't work well, from that grows legislation and restriction if necessary. Mm -hmm. We don't know until we try to see what we've got. So I think that this would be the test case, right? And and I think we'll find out in relatively short order if it's going to be a distraction. Well, I don't mean to interrupt you, but it sounds like you're doing is, is taking us down the road towards like a, a, a a limited time frame, special permit almost, which I'm not sure if it's boring. Oh, so we, we can't do that once this is met. So we can't regulate this for a year or anything like that. No. We don't have that power? We do not. The, my, issue, my issue on this it has nothing to do with the owner or even the fact that he would not use it responsibly. Yes. My issue is that we have size regulations on si signs. We have lighting regulations on signs. The technology is very cheap. TVs are cheap. Right. So it's not that it's new technology. It's we're using it in a slightly different way. Right. We these will mushroom and we have absolutely no guidance on this whatsoever. Next month, and maybe it's an exaggeration, we can get 10 of these requests. They'll get 10 of these requests. And there is no guidance in the code, whereas every other planning choice that we make has guidance on them. And there is no guidance on this. So the only guidance we have is that we have a restriction of two square feet. For a sign? Not this uh, kind of sign, in the, in right? Window? Isn't there a two square foot? It's not sign? on the window. It's, it's, on, the window. it's, it's on, on the side, side of the building. It's on the side it's of the building. building. Yeah. All right. But don't we have a two square foot? 21 by 27. Oh, so it does fall within the codified it does fall restriction. Within two feet. The only restriction okay. we have yeah. is two feet. And it still falls within the two feet. It's right? fitting right into his menu sign, which he said they were just which, that which sign. Yeah. did fit into those restrictions, right? Originally. So I mean, we really don't have uh, any any direction whatsoever. And, you so we right. should sit down and discuss it and talk to Brian or the trustees and figure out what we're going to do because we could mushroom. And, and also to investigate point. what other municipalities are doing. Right. Yeah, and again, I think there was reference that this is a, an, another New York City trend. I think David might have mentioned that. That's drifting to the east. So yeah. yeah. All right, but there is a motion on the floor to approve 
And I think that certainly it's an area that needs exploration and we may have guidance on it in the future. However, we don't have guidance on it now, right. other than that it fits in a two square foot rule in the existing place right. that's already been approved. And I think that's all we have to go on. So, right. motion has been made and seconded. I'll pull the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Opposed. More opposed? Any other opposed? I, but on the motion still, we do have professional signs. One sign, not larger than two square feet. So right. Yes. One sign. That's all we have. That's the second sign. He has a sign. Okay. Oh, so on these buildings that have signs on both front and back, I thought this was the fan thing is current sign. Well, the facade. But he was approved a menu board. Right. Four. So and the menu board that in the, the menu board. That right. was approved. Okay. Menu board. Yeah. It's regular signs. You're only allowed one per okay. elevation. So we have oh, one per elevation. Right. We have presumptive all we have presumptive folks in favor, one opposed. I'm going to ask by show of hands. Those in favor, raise your right hand. One, two, three, four, five. Those opposed, and one opposed, let the record show there was one opposed. Abstain. And one abstention. The motion is passed, and I would refer this to Council and Carol to uh, bring the concerns back again and ask for some kind of direction from the legislative body. Or at least have a legislative body yeah. okay. a little auditorium on these kinds of signs until they have a and until they have such time as which would probably be the wise yeah. thing to do. Yeah. And then have the opportunity, but again, that's not my purview, that's theirs. Something that has often come into my mind during summer Thursday evening. Was there was there was a probably a time when the village board, whichever board would have been in power at the time, had a chance to look at the bar situation in this community, and we let that opportunity slip. This would appear to be a much more minor situation, but this is the time to get a handle on this and begin to try to restrict what might happen in the future. And I hope they don't let it slip. Well spoken, Mr. Weeks. Please get that Question. Yeah. No, I, I was thinking, I think I'd like to stick with abstaining also because I there were too many questions said. Okay, like another right. extension so noted, but the motion still passes. Excuse me, so that's where most of the And I'm a real pain in the neck, but I'll bring up the point we were talking about the open meetings. All the, the, I, in, I believe I'm correct. Those are, I believe, I love you both. Those are not considered the legitimate reasons to yeah. stay in. Absolutely, it is. You, you it's just, even with 75% of the horizontal measures. You have to give a reason for your extension. No, you don't. You have to give a reason for a recusal. Are we even the record? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm right. explaining my vote on the record. An abstention is a legitimate vote. Okay, so is there any more business to be brought before the board this evening? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn quickly. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all, one and all, for your uh, for your uh, participation tonight in the spirit of discussion. Motion to adjourn has been voted on. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed?